Each film I've tried to take something. I have one of the costumes which was shipped from the UK back when I did Thor 2 and I brought it over in a big shipping container and I thought, great, I'm going to put it in my, you know, in the games room or somewhere, you know. It's still at my parents' place in the garage in that box. <laughs> When I got the film, it was a number of things went through my head. Firstly, it was great to be employed. It was great, my, I was gonna extend my visa. I was gonna be a part of something did, which sounded big and exciting, but I didn't have a whole lot of detail beyond that. And it was, you know, a leap of faith on one hand as far as what was being pitched, but pretty easy leap in the sense that um, I didn't have any other options. I don't think you've been completely honest with me. Know this, son of Cole. You and I, we fight for the same cause, the protection of this world. From this day forward, you can count me as your ally. If you return the items you have taken from Jane. Stolen. Borrowed. Each time you play a character, it, it's about what you bring to it, obviously, but so much of it is about who you're interacting with. And that can be other actors, the writers, the producers, director, the, the crew, you know, everybody has some sort of influence in some way. That's what's been such a joy about playing the character over the course of 10, 11 years is working with different directors and seeing what different directors expect, want, or pull out of the character. You know, we had built this incredible world with, with Kenneth Branagh, and I think we really nailed the sort of vulnerability and the fish out of water and this, this individual coming to terms with who he was and what his place in the world was. And, and then with Taika Waititi, it was about doing something different and unexpected, and so we really dismantled the world, we dismantled the character, we put him in a very different place and environment than he'd been in the past. Uh, we changed his look, a dramatic haircut, which was, you know, um, a risk to the, the comic book fans for a minute there. <laughs> Please, kind sir, do not cut my hair. It was a constant exploration of what else we could do and staying away from what felt familiar. That was our duty at that point, we, um, to service the character in the world in a different, unique, fresh way for the audience. Yes! Hey, hey! We know each other. He's a friend from work. I had <laughs> the, the tricky task of having this otherworldly, godlike figure uh, that I was playing, but trying to make it relatable. And I think when the character didn't work at times was because we didn't have relatable features within his his personality and his experiences that anyone could really sort of gravitate toward or empathize with or understand or connect with. Endgame in particular, yeah, there was the dealing with sort of the mental health of the character um, and his sort of the altering of moods and, and depression, if you, if you will. I know you think I'm down there wallowing in my own self-pity, waiting to be rescued and, and saved, but I'm fine, okay? We're fine, aren't we? No, all good here, mate. So, whatever it is that you're offering, we're not into it. Don't care, couldn't care less. Goodbye. <laughs> and due to tragedy, loss, suffering, uh, which, you know, all of us as human beings have experienced in some way, shape or form, and those elements, I do believe, allowed us to have some great connective tissue between an audience and, and, and this larger-than-life character. And each time since then, I've, we've really had to dissect that and say, well, what mental state is he now? Where's his mental fitness or his mental toughness? Is he um, healthy enough to deal with this? If not, how does he deal with it? Oh, wait! What am I looking at? Oh, sometimes it takes a second. <laughs> the original hammer actually a friend of mine called me and said <laughs> is this yours and we'd used it in a documentary that I was shooting that she was a part of and it ended up at her place and she said do you want it back and I said yeah I think <laughs> I think I should get that one back the opportunity to work with Ron Howard um, was the initial attraction. I didn't know anything about the story of Nicky Lauder and James Hunt. My dad used to race motorbikes, um, so I was, understood the sort of that world a little. This was obviously Formula One and cars, but there's such a, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a very similar sort of space to inhabit. Lauder is through. He's in the lead. Hunt will be determined to make up for that mistake. <laughs> Contact! The leaders are spun out! 
so it wasn't unfamiliar, but I had a lot of work to do as far as understanding who this character was and what the mindset of a Formula One driver was at the time, and especially in the 70s. You know, there were the statistics were incredibly intimidating as far as would you survive the season or not. Incredibly dangerous sport to partake in. We looked a lot at what the discipline and mindset of those individuals were, and Nicky Lauda embodied the absolute precision and the prep and the quiet discipline and focus, whereas James Hunt went, I'm going to launch myself into the adrenaline side of things and have it be as, as visceral and animalistic as possible. And he had huge talent, obviously, as a, as a race car driver, um, but a very different mentality to Nicky Lauda. That move was called on suicide. What if I hadn't braked? We'd have crashed. Well, no, no, but we didn't, did we? Thanks to your impeccable survival instincts. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. What's your name? James Simon Wallace Hunt. Remember it, my little jelly friend. Jawohl. Remember the name. The physicality of the character was completely different to what I'd been doing. Um, I had to lose a lot of weight off the back of Huntsman and Thor and, and get and fit into the race car. And then comes the challenge of playing a real life individual and someone that people adored and look up to and, and it inspired many, many people and a generation of, of drivers and so on and had fans across the world. That was a pretty nerve wracking task. I just kind of, I don't know, allowed that fear um, to, to, to motivate me into my prep. And it's Andretti who has the lead, but Hunt is attacking. Hunt's going round the outside of Andretti. Nicky Lauda following him through. Hunt leads into the first right-hander. We had a number of days where we were in the cars ourselves. Um, they were replicas of those cars, and it was exhilarating and exciting and uh, some of the f most enjoyable prep I've had to do. We then had, you know, these cars that we were driving set up with cameras all over them, sort of smaller cameras mounted on our helmet, super close up, you know, on, focused on one eyeball at times, on each wheel, behind us, in front of us and so on. And so as we drove around the track and weaved through with the other drivers, we were getting real in-camera action that, uh, you know, you couldn't really produce on a VFX stage as much, I think, without that authenticity. And then we had a stunt, drive, a stunt crew and stunt drivers come in and do the extreme stuff, and they were kind of bumper to bumper and weaving in and out as they would in a, in a real race. The blending of us being inserted into that environment and, and, and those guys as well gave such impressive footage and, as you say, experience for an audience member. It was a really exciting thing to, to be a part of. <laughs> I had just done Saturday Night Live, I think, and I did a cameo in a film, Vacation. And so I'd done a little bit of comedy, which Paul Feig had seen and thought, oh, he should play this character. And the script was great and fun. I loved all the, the women who were gonna work in the film, were gonna play those parts. But I said to Paul, there's not a whole lot on the page. Like, what, what, what do you want me doing? He said, oh, we'll figure it out when you get here. So I said, okay, why not, let's go. And I got there, uh, turned up to the studio the day before we started shooting. and. He handed me the script, I read the script, and I said, there's still nothing in here, like, what, what, am, I, what am I doing? And he said, it's okay, we're gonna improvise and have fun. And my immediate reaction was, I, this is not only the end of my career, but I'm gonna ruin this film. I'm gonna let everyone down, I haven't done this before, what am I doing? And then I met Melissa McCarthy, Kristen Wiig, the whole the crew, the cast, and I just became a whole lot more comfortable because there was such a sense of camaraderie and, 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 and collaboration there at play, um, and they, took me under their wing and we just went on this adventure, this wacky adventure of discovering who this character was. What have you been doing with your whole life? Great question. Oh, well, um, lots of different <laughs> jobs. Um, I did the, um, did the actor thing. Uh, oh, worked just for... Gonna, just real quick, um, can I ask why no, no glass? Oh, uh, yeah, they just kept getting dirty, so I took them out. That's... I don't have to clean them anymore. Oh, you can just... boy. I gotta, I gotta yeah. try to keep that in mind. Ninety percent of it was improvised and in the moment, and um, not often do you have an environment to really do that in. You know, people talk about in, it, improvisation, but usually it's they've got a couple of things tucked away in their pockets and they're going to say that on camera, which is not quite improvisation. Whereas this was, you know, Melissa would say, "I want to try something," and just start coming at me with a line, and then I'd have to sort of sink or swim and <laughs> try to come up with something to throw back and so on. And incredibly freeing because there was still a lot of you know, the sort of anxiety bubbling under the surface, but 
it just became so much fun. It, it, it just became about trying to not laugh, about trying to make the other person laugh. It reminded me of drama class or being back in high school or something and thought, I want to take that into everything I do. You know, I, I want to be able to have that much fun. I want it to be um, a wonderful collaboration and exploration as that was. <laughs> From the character was a pretty broken individual, one who deep down had a lot of courage in there somewhere, but it was buried through a very depressive experience, the loss of his, his wife and family. And so he was, you know, searching for answers at the bottom of a, a bottle. But that kind of attitude, this sort of brashness, the, it was a carefree, um, chaotic sort of nature to him, which allowed us to have a lot of fun with it. I seem to have drunk it all, but you're welcome to it when it comes out again. Again, I was still happy to be employed and to be working in big, big films and big entertainment, popcorn, blockbusters, if you will. That was the films I loved growing up, but I also had an appetite to do um, some more smaller character-based kind of films where special effects and um, big action scenes weren't necessarily the most dominant force. How much has been made uh, about the punch that you caught from Kristen Stewart? Oh, yeah. Have you forgiven her for that? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, I, I was more upset that she didn't continue on through the take. She kind of hit me and then immediately went, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I was like, that would have been the, that would have been the perfect, uh, most truthful take we had. I think she was more upset than I was. It was unlike anything I'd read before. Um, the world that was created was unique and fresh. The character itself was vastly different to anything I'd done before. I was intrigued by the questions it was posing and um, you know, this search for understanding of human emotion and can we manipulate that and can we have mood altering substances and, and drugs and, and so on from a pharmaceutical group. Uh, Jeff Heather, can I have your permission to administer N40, drip on? Acknowledge. Oh uh, yeah. Heather. God, she's a pain in the ass. Acknowledge. Thank you. For me, I just saw an opportunity to, to explore a space and try things I hadn't done before. Just about every actor loves that process and, and it, you know, where it is just about performance. You're working with different individuals and if you have an idea of how you think they're gonna play it and they do something different and immediately you've got to pivot and adjust and so on. I like the spontaneity to that. I like b being forced into a place of unknown, and then you are truly in the moment. Uh, Come on, guys, words, words, words. Okay, yeah, she's starting to look pretty good. <laughs> there was a great script there. Joe Kaczynski was already directing, and it was right in the middle of COVID and lockdowns and restrictions and everything. We also wanted a film that we could shoot on a sound stage with three or four or five actors in a confined space, a controlled environment. And this read like a play. It, 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 I think it could be a stage play, the way it presents itself and unfolds. So we were all really excited about the practicality of being able to uh, shoot during that time. Yeah. I could. Uh, yeah. I could. Good what, Jeff? I think it was going to shoot maybe in, 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 in the US at one point. I was in Australia, um, so as far as this producing element of it, I said, look, there's some great spaces in Australia to shoot, you know, incredible cr crews and casts that we could utilise. And to their credit and Netflix um, and the produ whole production team, to be able to pivot from wherever they were shooting before and put it in Australia and set it up, I think, within, you know, felt like six or eight weeks, and then to shoot it in about six weeks, I think, was pretty remarkable. 